Hey, what's going on everyone? How's it going? It's Nolan here, and welcome back to another Steam 2 video. And today, we're once again going to be talking about competitive weapons. I made a video like this, like two seasons ago, but I think that now is the perfect time to finally update that video. In this video, we're going to be talking about the best weapons that I think you should be using, and that are going to help you reach that Fable rank a lot easier. And for the weapons that we're going to be taking a look at today, the other Fable weapons are definitely going to be disqualified. We're not going to be looking at the Luna Sao or the Mountain Top, none of that. We're just going to be looking at normal weapons that you can get without actually getting to Fable. Alright, so the very first weapon that we're going to be talking about today is going to be the Exotic Hand Cannon, The Last Word. This was one of the two weapons that was always on my loadout. The Last Word is an extremely deadly weapon at close range. You could deal with shotguns, you could deal with pretty much any other primary, just because of the high rate of fire and high damage you can output with The Last Word. The only bad thing is that you can't really fight anywhere else that is not close range. So you really have to commit to close range, be aggressive with the last word. And it can also have a little bit of a learning curve. Not everyone's just going to be able to pick up the last word and you start destroying everyone with it. You're shutting down shotgunners left and right with it. So you definitely want to take the last word first into quick play. Let's start learning the weapon. Let's start getting comfortable with the weapon. And remember always to try to tap fire the weapon. Never go full auto unless you really need to, unless somebody's really in front of you. Usually you want to use tap fire the weapon. You can tap fire it pretty quickly, but it will definitely make the recoil a lot more manageable, especially here on console. And the last thing that I want to say about the last word is to go for body shots course. The last word has an amazing body shot TTK, so you definitely want to take advantage of it. Hitting somebody four times in the body is going to be so much easier than hitting somebody three times in the head to kill them. If you don't get the three headshots, you're going to have to take four shots anyways, so you always want to aim for center mass with the last word and try to get that optimal body shot TTK. So the last word is just an amazing close range weapon that really rewards using the weapon a whole lot. The more you use the weapon, the more comfortable you get with the weapon and the better you're going to do with the weapon. The better that you do, the more you want to use it and it's just a cycle that's going to make you be better with the last word. So the last word is definitely a weapon that you shouldn't use overlook because it's just amazing. Next up we're going to have an old friend, a weapon that we actually had in the original video, which is going to be the DOS Rock Blues. Even after the recent shotgun nerf, the shotguns are still super dominant close range and are definitely still a good choice. So the DOS Rock Blues is still really great. Maybe you won't one shot people as far away as you used to be able to, especially in Season 4, but you're still going to be able to one shot them from pretty far away. Remember that when you're farming for a shotgun like Dust Rock Blues, you're looking for some accurate rounds and also some rifle barrel or full choke. It can be either of the two. Full choke used to be king, but now since it got nerfed, rifle barrel is more in line with it, so you could pretty much get away with both of them and still have a pretty good one shot kill range. So if Dust Rock Blues is still an excellent choice that you should definitely still not overlook, especially if you like shotgunning. And it's also very good because it's really easily acquired. You could pretty much farm the perfect Dust Rock Blues from two different law sectors. One in Mars, next to Anna Bray. And then there's another one on Earth that you can also farm as well to try to get your perfect Dust Rock Blues. So if you're a fan of shotguns, the Dust Rock Blues is going to be an amazing choice. And while we're talking about kinetic shotguns, we gotta mention the Chaperone. The Chaperone is an amazing shotgun and... If you feel really comfortable with it, and you think that you can do good consistently with the Chaperone, I definitely recommend that you run the Chaperone. And we all know how good the Chaperone is, you have amazing range that only gets better after you get a kill. The only bad thing about the Chaperone is that it is a slow shotgun, so you're definitely going to have to put in some practice with it. But if you got some of those sweet Chaperone skills, I definitely recommend that you put them to work in competitive and you start destroying people. Next up, we're going to have a Pulse Rifle. Yes, we actually are going to be talking about a Pulse Rifle, and it's probably going to be the one that you're thinking of. No, not that one. The other one. Yes, that one. We're going to be talking about the Blast Furnace. And the Blast Furnace is the perfect weapon for when you find yourself in some longer range maps. It uses has amazing range that it can even outrange some of the Scout Rifles. It's pretty crazy the range that you actually have on the Blast Furnace. It's also an aggressive frame Pulse Rifle, meaning that you're going to be giving your enemies a lot a lot of flinch and it's definitely gonna mess with them when they try to shoot you back. The best place that you definitely want to find yourself with this weapon is gonna be the medium range. 
while a lot of the other popular weapons, like a lot of the 180 hand cannons, you can't really compete with your range since they're gonna be running to a lot of damage drop off. So range is definitely your friend with this weapon and you wanna end up engaging people at use some long lines of sight. There only a few weapons can keep up with you, like the 150 scout rifles. But the 150s themselves are not really an archetype that you run into a whole lot in the crucible, so you probably won't run into too many issues with them. But if somebody pushes you, you will struggle quite a bit at close range. So I definitely recommend that you pair up this weapon with a nice close range weapon, something like a shotgun, in case somebody tries to get a little bit too close to you. So this is definitely an amazing weapon that you should consider pulling out on some of the longer range maps. And the final weapon that we're going to be taking a look at for the kinetic slot is going to be a 180 hand cannon. You guys know it, you guys probably have heard so much about it. We're going to be taking a look at the service revolver. And this hand cannon definitely lives up to its reputation, with some amazing base stats and also some pretty great rolls. You can get some amazing perks on this weapon, but mostly what you're looking for is some range and some damage increasing perks. Both Rampage and Kill Clip can roll in this weapon, so you're looking for one of them. And you're also going to be looking for some range increasing perks, like Accurized Rounds or maybe some Range Finder. This hand cannon can definitely put in some work, it's a very solid hand cannon. Since a 180 hand cannon is very easy to use, especially on consoles, since the 180s don't really get affected by Bloom like some of the other hand cannons do. So the 180 hand cannons are usually going to be your go-to weapons when it comes to hand cannons here on console. They are very easy to use and they're also very easy to hit headshots with. So if you're on the step where you have to get some headshots for the Lumens Howl, the Service Wolver is going to be used amazing for that. Overall, this one's a very solid hand cannon that can do very well in competitive. Alright, so now we're moving on to the energy weapons and we're going to be starting off with a fusion rifle. The legendary Aaron Till FR4. And if you guys have watched the channel for a bit, you know that I like to joke around and say that the Aaron Till is what really carried me to Fable. And if you want to get to Fable, all you got to do is use the Aaron Till. And while it's mostly a joke, it does have some truth behind it. The Aaron Till is just the best fusion rifle in the game. It is super consistent. And that is the thing that you're looking for the most in competitive and for fusion rifles. Consistency is just what's just gonna constantly allow you to climb. The Aaron Till is just an amazing fusion rifle that at times it can really surprise you with the crazy amount of range and the crazy one shots it can get. The thing about the Aaron Till is that you're gonna have to learn how to play the Aaron Till. You're gonna have to stick to close range but not too close where the shotguns can just rush you but not get too far away where you won't be able to one shot people anymore with the fusion rifle so just like the last word this one is going to be a weapon that's going to reward you for using the weapon a lot getting familiar with the weapon and knowing the limits of your weapon the things that you can do with it the things that you can get away with so this one's going to be another one of those weapons that are very good but i definitely think that you should take into quick play first to familiarize yourself with the weapon and get used to the weapon and since you're using a fusion rifle, you gotta remember the most important thing that you gotta do with the fusion rifles, which is pre-charge. Pre-charge the fusion rifle when you think there's somebody around. You do that so when an enemy does appear, you don't really have to wait the entire charge time. And that's really the thing that you have to get the most used to when it comes to the Aaron Till. The Aaron Till is a very slow charging fusion rifle. So pre-charging is gonna have to be a must with this weapon. If you don't do it and an enemy is close, there's a chance that you will never even get to fire the weapon. So this is the most important skill that you want to have you want to start using the fusion rifles. Not use the Aaron Till, but use all fusion rifles in general. The only bad thing about the Aaron Till is that it can be very hard to get. The only way to get this weapon is from the gunsmith. And the gunsmith has so many weapons in his loot pool. It also costs a lot of weapon materials even just to get something from him. So unfortunately you actually have a pretty low chance to get a good random rolled Aaron Till. But if you play in year 1, you can pull the year 1 Aaron Till from your collections. And the year 1 roll is just amazing, you don't really have to worry about it. You have accelerated coils, you have under pressure, you have a good sight, you have pretty much everything that you would want on the Aaron Till. So the year 1 version is definitely a very good roll if you can get a good random roll one. And it's still the one that I'm using since I still can't get a good random roll from the gunsmith. So the Aaron Till is definitely a very good weapon that can be extremely effective on the right hands. 
All right, so now up next, we're gonna be talking about some shotguns. Yes, since the shotguns are so popular, you know we gotta take a look at a shotgun for this special slot. And we got two different shotguns that we're gonna be taking a look at. They're both pretty similar. They're both high impact shotguns. They're both aggressive shotguns. The first one's gonna be one that you skimmed this season, and it's gonna be the last man standing. You can get this shotgun from Gambit Prime or The Reckoning, and it's actually pretty good. Like I said, it's an aggressive frame shotgun, and it makes the weapon feel very consistent. And for these shotguns, you're basically looking for the same perks that you wear on the Dose Rock Blues. Full choke, or rifle right arrow, and some accurate rounds. You want to get as much range as you can on these shotguns. But if you do get some rifle barrel and some accurate rounds, you could get some one shots at some pretty good distances. We're talking about very consistent one shots at 7 to 8 meters, which is definitely very good. The only bad thing about this weapon is that the Gambit Prime weapons and the Reckoning weapons can be hard to get because of all their RNG. So because of that, it might be hard to get a good roll on the shotgun. And that's why we're also going to be talking about another shotgun that's pretty similar to this one that still performs pretty well but it's just a hell of a lot easier to get and that is the Mindbender's Ambition. The Mindbender's Ambition is an amazing shotgun especially if you get the curator roll. I'm a big fan of the curator roll. You got some rifle barrel, you got opening shot, you got rampage. It's one shot kill range is pretty good and it's very similar to my last man standing. And you also have the added benefit or having rampage on the weapon so after you get your first kill it's gonna be easier just to chain kills thanks to the rampage you're having more damage and basically being more effective at longer range thanks to that extra damage so the weapon is pretty good and it's also very easy to get so as long as the fanatic is the knife hole, you're gonna be able to get this beauty so these two shotguns here are the ones that i'm gonna recommend that you run in your energy slot they're really solid and you won't regret equipping them Alright, so for our next weapon, we're gonna have the trust. And I'm gonna keep the trusting a little bit short since we all know what the trust does and why the trust is good. It's a 180 hand cannon, meaning that it's very easy to use. And it can also roll explosive rounds, which makes the already pretty good 180s into used amazing 180s. So if you have a trust with explosive rounds, I definitely recommend that you give it a try. It's just amazing in the crucible. The benefits that you get from explosive rounds are very noticeable in the 180s. The extra range, the extra flinch. The only bad thing about running explosive rounds is that a lot of the times it won't register your headshots as headshots because of the explosive damage. So if you're trying to get your headshots done in competitive, don't use a weapon with explosive rounds because you might struggle quite a bit. But if all that you're trying to do is just win and climb, then that trust with explosive rounds is definitely going to be a very strong choice. Next up, we're going to have probably the most underrated weapon that we're going to have on this list, and it's going to be the Polaris Lance. This won't be a weapon that you can use in all the maps, but in certain maps, this thing can do very well, and it can just destroy people. The 150s, when they're in their preferred range, they're actually pretty amazing. 3-tapping somebody to the head is super easy, especially with the low recoil the 150s have. The thing about it is that there's not a lot of places where you can really completely take advantage of the 150s. Most of the maps in Destiny 2 are pretty close range, that's why we don't really see too much of them. But there's a couple maps, kind of like Equinox, where you can really make the 150s shine, and the Polaris Lance is a very good one. And in the right maps, this thing is just a beast, being able to treat up people from across the map is just such a strong thing, and even if you don't kill them with 3 shots, you are going to be doing a lot of damage per shot, meaning that you're going to be helping your teammates out by just putting in some damage into the enemies. So you can just pick somebody off. So if you find yourself on the longest range maps in the game, I definitely recommend that you give the Polaris Lance a try. Just remember to fully take him into your range and don't let anybody get close to you. Because the 150s, they are not good once people get all up in your face. So you want to keep them as far away as you can. And in the case that you are running another exotic, or maybe you just don't think that the Polaris Lance is worth the exotic slot, you can always just pull the legendary version of the Polaris Lance from the collections. It will definitely still do very good, so that's definitely an option. Alright, so now before we move on to the heavy weapons, I do have two honorable mentions for the two exotic fusion rifles. The Jotun and the Telesto. Telesto is still pretty good, maybe not as good as it used to be. It's just not the I win weapon anymore, especially from some of the places where you used to snipe people. But the Telesto is still pretty good. So you just completely ignored it. 
and also the Jotun can be effective, but I think only on the lower ranks. There it can be extremely effective, but the higher you get on your competitive ranks, the less effective Jotun will become. As people begin to actually know how to play against Jotun, it becomes a lot less effective. But on the lower ranks, Jotun can definitely do very good, and it might be a fun weapon to use for a while. Alright, so now let's move on to the heavy weapons, and we gotta start with a machine gun. The machine guns are great just because the amount of possible kills that you can get once you have the heavy ammo. The one thing that you wanna remember when using your machine gun is that while you do have a power weapon, if people team shoot you, you will go down pretty easily before you even get to kill someone. Machine gun sacrifice power for more ammo. So while you aren't able to kill people as fast as you would with some other weapons, some other power weapons, you can kill a lot more people with that ammo that you get on your machine gun. And if you're using it right, you could probably get like six to seven kills with it every time you pick up some heavy. Just make sure that you don't run into too many enemies at once because then you're gonna have a bad time with the machine gun. Next up, we're gonna have the grenade launchers. The grenade launchers can still be pretty good. It's a similar story, kind of like the machine guns, where you're very good at 1v1ing people, but you don't want to run into too many groups of enemies. But you're definitely in a better situation if you run into a group of enemies with a grenade launcher than you would be with a machine gun. It's still not super ideal. You want to try to find yourself in some 1v1 so you can just easily kill the enemies. Remember that the stat that you're definitely going to be looking for on the grenade launchers is going to be the blast radius. You want to get as much blast radius as you can, so you try to improve that as much as you can. And that's pretty much all I have to say. It's not really super complicated to use the grenade launchers. You see an enemy, you fire, they blow up, they die, you get a kill. Pretty simple. Next up, we have the Warcliff Coil, the destroyer of supers, the destroyer of teams, it pretty much just destroys everything, the coil, there's nothing that can really stand against the coil, and that's exactly why you see it so often, in competitive, and use the crucible row. It's just such an effective weapon for dealing with supers, or maybe you team wiping the enemy team. So if you are not running an exotic in your primary, or your energy slot, you definitely want to be running the coil. The Koyo is just going to give you a huge advantage in competitive since you won't have to be afraid of supers, which are a big thing in competitive. People like to spam supers as much as they can, run 5 super mods, so having an effective counter against them is definitely something that you want. And with the Koyo, probably the most meta competitive weapon, that's where we're going to end the video. As always, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did. This is the key if you didn't subscribe to the channel in case you guys haven't already. Hopefully this video will help you guys make your journey in competitive a little bit easier. Also remember to share the video if you think somebody else will find this video useful. If they've been struggling with competitive, maybe this will help them as well. Anyways, thank you all for watching today, and I'll see you all in my next video. Take care everyone, have a good day.